On today's show, we're talking about the Lumix G9 and seeing how well it performed while shooting a women's basketball game. We'll see how well that autofocus did. Good morning, and greetings, salutations, greetings everybody out there who's watching the Photo Justice Show. This is Photo Justice Photo Moment, the first live, not quite daily, almost daily. We used to do daily. That got to be too much. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, live show here on YouTube, youtube.com slash photojoseph, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, hit the thumbs up, the bell, all that, because you know what to do. Just make sure you don't miss any shows. If you're here for the live show, it's really cool because you get to participate in the comments. I can do this. If you have questions, you can ask. If you're watching live and you've got a question, make sure you put at photo Joseph in front of the question and then see it shows up on my screen like that. And I know you've got something you would like me to address. If you've got a question about the show, throw it up there at any time, at any time, at any point, at any point, and I will do my best to address it. Um, sometimes we miss questions, in which case you can pop them into the comments after the live show, and that's fine too. Hey, so today we're talking about the Lumix G9, and it's for still photography. We're talking still photography here. It's autofocus capabilities. So I finally, it took a while, but I finally got a good sporting event to go shoot. And I don't, uh, th before we look at the pictures, just let me just preface this by saying I'm not a sports photographer. Last time I shot sports seriously was high school, okay? So that was kind of a long time ago. Kind of a different camera setup back then. Um, so the pictures you'll see may not be the best sports photos in the world. And it was a college basketball game and we live in a small town, so it's not like it's a massive thing. And, and frankly, the lighting in this place could have been brighter, but hey, you're gonna see what I got and you're gonna see how the camera performed and I'm going to try as much as I can to explain what autofocus mode I was in. I know that I, I was switching it up a lot and I'm gonna show you in a moment how I ended up setting up the camera. Um, so the earlier shots, there's less that are continuously in focus, if you will, than we get into the later shots when I kind of tweaked the AF and I got into a mode that I was really, really happy with. So we're gonna look at the settings on there and then we're gonna look at some of the pictures. Um, there's a lot of them, but we're gonna go through them quickly. Also. This bag, somebody was asking about it beforehand. This, remember this bag? This is the, uh, the Streetomatic bag. I'm giving this away, or I'm trying to. It's from Cozy Speed, it's super cool. We did a whole show about this, we'll link to it right up here. Uh, I'm trying to give this thing away. Well, diff not this, this one's mine, but I got another one to give away. Um, uh, it's awesome. I did a, there's a contest going on, but nobody seems to be that interested in the contest. I don't know, maybe it's because you actually have to go buy something. It was the whole black and white color filters contest. So, um, so again, link into that up here so you can learn how to win it. If we don't get any entries soon, I gotta come up with a different contest. But on the flip side, if you have or are willing to spend a few bucks on some black and white color filters, you could win the contest just by default by being one of the very few that actually enter. It sounds really bad. I debated whether I should talk about this or just kind of ignore it and just do a whole new contest. But I figured, hey, what the heck. Um, embarrassment aside that hardly anyone has entered, I guess it's just there's the bar to entry maybe a little bit too high. But if you want to win this bag, check out the video. It'll be easy to win. Some one of you can win this thing. And it's awesome. I really love this thing. I think it's really nice. So we're gonna just, if you want this, there's one waiting for you. Let me get this out of the way now. Okay. With that out of the way, let's talk about the camera. So Lumix G9. Oop, let's get this thing back on. Let me get this thing synced up to my screen. I'm gonna show you the autofocus mode, talk about the autofocus modes in here, explain the kind of what I switched through, and then show you where I ended up. So we are going to start by bringing up, bring up the right commands here, here we go, let's do it like so. So here's the autofocus mode. So as you well know, you've got your face detection, you've got tracking, you've got the 225 area where you just you basically tries to focus on everything. Uh, you have your custom multi-mode and then your one area and then the pinpoint mode. Those are all the different modes that you have. So I didn't really know which would be the best for this. I, I tend to start pretty much everything in face detection. And here's why, especially on the G9, I think the GH5S now does this as well. They've enhanced the face detection to add body detection. And that actually worked really, really well. I would say at the end, in the end result, that was probably my second best option to go with that. The body detection works really well and you, it's got tracking multiple bodies. Now, obviously, the camera doesn't know who the key player is in the event of a basketball game, obviously, we're talking about. It doesn't know who's got the ball. Now, if there was a sport mode where it detected the player with the ball, that'd be cool, but no. So it would detect bodies, and quite often it would get the right one, but not always. Uh, I'd say more often than not, it's probably grabbing the closest one, and you'll see that when we go through some, through some of the photos. I never tried the autofocus tracking mode. That's kind of, I think tracking is a little bit too hard for something like this. Tracking is good where you can take the time to position the, the tracking dot on the subject, lock them, and then they move. For something like sports where things are just all over the place, and I don't think tracking is really the way to go. 
Then there's the 225 area, which actually worked very well as well. I think the face detection slash body worked better, I think, but the 225 worked out really well. I also tried the single area mode, and that would be the most effective when I could get the, the focus area onto the player or keep them in that zone consistently. But that was hard because I was shooting with a fairly long lens. This is a 35 to 100, so a 70 to 200 equivalent. I mean, that's, I guess that's not long. It's normal for sports. Uh, the f2.8 lens. And, um, and so I was trying to shoot pretty tight. And, you know, the players are running towards you and they're all over the place. And that just keeping them in that zone didn't always work out that well. So what I ended up with was going to the custom multi-mode. And I chose, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Let's go back to this. Um, sorry. There we go. Uh, the custom multi mode I went into was the horizontal strip. So it's basically using the full width of the sensor. It could be using all 225 areas, but instead of using, or 255, instead of using all of them, it's just using a narrow center band. So I know that my players are always going to be somewhere in the middle of the screen. They're not going to suddenly be only in the top or only in the bottom. So I figured this is a safe way to go. And that worked out really, really well. And I could have even narrowed the bands more narrow, but this way, let's see if I go like so, you can see that's effectively what it looked like. We've got that narrow band across the middle. And that was how I did the focusing. And it seemed to work out really well. So that's how I set up the camera. Probably the second half of it, which and you'll see when we look at the photos, uh, as we get later in the game, there's a, a higher number of photos in focus. That's, I think, where we were. I think that's, that's pretty much where I was at. Um, I shot shutter priority, is that right? It actually might have been, I shot a pretty high ISO. Let me check the ISO it's on. Oh, I already changed it. I think it was at 6400. We'll see in the picture. I think it was 6400 ISO. It's at a pretty high because it's really not very much light in the gym. And obviously shooting wide open F2.8, um, I might have been a, a high shot, I don't remember. But anyway, it worked out well. And, you know, you'll see. We got some good shots. I shot everything using the Angel Bird cards. Um, just kind of reminding you about these guys. These Angel Bird did send these out to me to use and evaluate and tell you guys about. And these are the cards that long before they had ever reached out to me, just so you know there's no bias here, long before they reached out to me, I had recommended these cards as the only cards that meet all the specs and actually have the rating. These have the V90 rating. We'll link to that video up here. I did a long version of that video and then a short one. We'll link to the short one up here and you can from there, if you want to watch the longer version, you can. Uh, but we did a whole explanation of cards. But these Angel Bird cards are really, really good. Now, obviously, shooting stills, having a really fast card helps to clear the buffer faster. If you're shooting video, you have to absolutely have to have the faster card. Um, but this is what I was using. So just you know, did a quick little close-up on these guys here. This is the card, the Angel Bird card here. This is the 64 gig is what I've got. They sent me a couple of these guys, you know, U3, V90, all that good stuff. So it's a really good fast card. And as I do more with video on the GH5S, shooting a 400 megabit, that's where these things will really come into play. But there's the cards that we we're using. Okay. With that said, we've looked at the camera. Let's look at a few pictures. Before I do that, um, just real quick, remember, as always, if you feel like you have taken value from today's show, if you've learned something of value from today's show, consider giving some value back. We call it value for value. Head over to photojoseph.com support, and you can find all the different ways that you can contribute and help keep this show on the air. And that includes things like simply uh, contributing a monthly amount, even if it's just a dollar through Patreon or through PayPal or one-off contributions if you feel like, oh man, I learned something huge today. Or you can just shop at the um, at the at any of the affiliate stores, go to kit.com slash photojuster for that. And if you have a really, really big, tough question, you can, of course, hire me directly and I will do my best to help you out on an individual basis. All right, with that said, let me see if there's any questions before we move forward. Uh, anything I need to hit on here? No, we're still talking about the audio on there. No, okay. Let's get on to the pictures. So here we go. This, I'm doing this in Photo Mechanic because it's going to allow me to browse the pictures the most quickly. And really what we're going to do is go through all of them very, very quickly. This, you see, there's 1,800 pictures. Now, I will say, <laughs> when you put this thing on at 20 frames per second, man, you can shoot a lot of pictures fast. One of the things, too, that I had kind of forgotten is that there is a buffer, a max, is it 50 or 60 frames of RAW that you can shoot before it needs to take a quick break to offload the, um, the buffer? And that buffer is going to offload more quickly, depending on, you know, the, depending on the speed of your card. The quicker the card, the faster the card, the quicker it will offload. Uh, so you'll see somewhere I was shooting too soon. I kind of forgot about this. Shooting a little bit. I'm so used to shooting video these days. Shooting too soon. And so I missed kind of the key moment. Like I told you, I'm not a sports photographer, right? Just, just, but I shot a lot, 1,800 raw pictures. We're not. We're, we're just going to fly through. So, um, just right off, you can see here. This is I mean, just the very first shot. Did a great job of tracking her running through. So there she's obviously moving towards the camera, goes to the handoff, and boom. It even 
jumped over to her and looked at the confused player in the background. What just happened? Um, worked out really well. So I thought it did, did great there. Uh, so here again, did a good job of tracking her. Somebody else gets in front of it. So there's someone comes in front and very quickly moved to focus to them. Uh, just fine. It did a good job there. So again, tracking through. We're, you know, I'm going to go through them quite quickly, um, just long enough to make sure that we can see whether it's in focus or not. Okay, so there's my, my demonstration of not being the greatest sports photographer in the world. Um, all right, so there's not very good shots there. Let's just move forward a little bit. Okay, so here it didn't quite get it, but you know, she's, there's two players in the front. There's one where I would have had to really pinpoint the focus on the player. So again, the player in the front. So I kind of I missed that shot. That one definitely did not work out. This one totally didn't work out, so I don't know what mode I was in there, but clearly it did not work, so let's move on. Now we're into this, following her, oh, that's a short burst. Okay, here's one, here's a, a good example too where it kind of switched back and forth. So we've got the player with the balls in focus there, and then it's transferring over to the front player and it kind of almost grabs onto her. And not quite yet, not quite yet. But somebody in the front, it's definitely confused there, so I really don't know what mode I was in, but, ha, huh, but, not what I meant. Um, but you're gonna see later where that exact same type of transition worked out really, really well. Okay, so. Moving through. Okay, here's here's a really good front tracking one. Let's go back to the beginning. So she is consistently in focus. May, okay, maybe it's a little bit soft a couple frames, but pretty consistently in focus all the way through there, running straight towards the camera. So that I thought was a pretty good example. Okay, clearly I totally missed the ball there. So let's get back, moving forward. And here we go. So back to it. So here's another, all right, we're gonna grab her. There we go. It's grabbed her now. And it lost her for a couple of frames. And then it comes back, and now she is all the way sharp, all the way through. Again, obviously running straight towards me, and we have kept totally sharp. Lost it in the early part of it, lost it for a couple of frames, and then grabbed her again all the way through to the end. So I thought that was pretty impressive there. There's another good one here where it's grabbed her. We've grabbed her all the way through, and awesome. So we grabbed her, and then there's the front person has jumped on, has uh, jumped into focus. And uh, let's just kind of go through some of these a little bit faster here. Let's get towards more towards the end. So here, oh, there we go. Some good, oh, that's, you know, that's not so bad photography here. I'm not like a bad sports photographer. It's just, you know, it's definitely not my thing. Definitely not what I'm best at. There we go. That's kind of good. Look, following her all the way through, keeping her in focus. Nice, nice. Overall, I would say, I think I'm pretty darn impressed. Here we go. Oh, holding on her. So it lost her, went to the girl in the back. But that's okay. It wasn't a great shot anyway. Um, don't have her yet here, so here I think I'm playing with modes again. So we got kind of Air Jordan flying through the air, kind of with, if, if only the camera had been tilted down just a little bit more. Darn it. Keeping onto her, so that's, yeah, and we keep onto her, I think, pretty well through this shot. And I'll lose it a little bit there, but then again, it's a crappy shot anyway. All right, let's see what else we got. Move on. Oh, this is fun. I put the 8 to 18 on and sat right under the basket until I got yelled at and told to move. Um, this is where I was trying to get some long bursts. You can see just how how many frames per second are being shot. So like, here's where I, I forgot that I, I needed to, uh, I wasn't gonna get that many frames and it's almost like a little movie, but then I go, oh, whoop, ran out of, filled the buffer. So at some point I figured that out and I realized I gotta start shooting a little bit later, a little bit later to get the shot that I want. Here, this is a good maneuver. Now obviously we're not doing focus tracking here. I think I might have even been in manual focus here just because I'm super wide and trying to keep everything in focus at once. All right, let's get past these super wide shots. It's almost like a movie and it's just so many frames. Okay, let's get past this. Let's get into the good stuff again. All right, here we go. So playing with the modes again, there we go. Um, so I think at this point, since I'm shooting vertical, I don't think I still had that, that horizontal line of focus points. Um, I was probably in the single point here. I'm not totally sure. Um, and I shot some portrait mode here, trying to just kind of fill the frame a little bit more. And it's definitely harder to do. It's definitely harder to get a good, uh, good shot there. But there and these, like here, this works out well. So here we keep her in focus the entire time. So again, unfortunately, I couldn't tell you which focus position, which focus uh, mode I was in in there um, as far as the actual uh, focus point, whether it's face detection or, or single point or what, but it worked. I mean, that kept her pretty well all the way through. I see there's a comment question coming in. Willie0851 says, what focus mode did you have it in autofocus, single or continuous? Oh, absolutely continuous. Yeah, yeah of course. I mean, that's the whole point. When you're doing sports, you, you want to be in continuous. Otherwise, it's going to focus and lock and hold. Uh, which is not what I want. I want it to continue. So yeah, the camera is set to AFC, autofocus continuous, absolutely. Ben Five Shuttle says, have you found out if your G9 is pre-production in respect to the hair shutter button? Um, it is, no, respect to the hair shutter button, it is, this is a pre production no wait. I think this is actually a, a proper production unit, but the hair shutter button, that is, that is normal. Um, that is normal. So I would say, like we talked about that before, what he's talking about is when you, 
when you, you know, normally half press to focus, push all the way to take the picture, obviously. That difference between the half press and pushing all the way to take the picture is really sensitive. It is a hair trigger, but I've gotten used to it and it's fine. So it's just one of those things where it just takes a little bit of getting used to. And I don't, I can't say whether I prefer having that or not. Uh, certainly shooting the sports like this, you know, it's really easy to, to get those shots off. So I, yeah, I don't really know. Oh, the other mode that I had on here that I had turned on, which is really cool, is there's a pre-burst recording where when I push the button to start shooting, it stores the last, is it six or eight frames before in the 20 frame per second mode? So that's even that's cutting into my shooting time a little bit. But that allows you to, you're following the, the action and something great happens and you push the button. At that point, it's obviously too late because the thing has already happened, but it grabs the few frames back behind it which I had that on, which is super cool. I totally forgot about that until just now. Uh, let's see here. Sarah says, have you tried recording 400 megabit video to the Angelbird card? Uh, I haven't done any extensive tests. I have shot 400 megabit to the card, but not any extensive kind of testing. But it is, if you're shooting 400 megabit, the Angelbird card is the one to get. That, of that, there is no question. Um, Brent's asking if I have the battery grip for the G9. I do not. But, oh, I'm glad you asked that, actually. I don't have the battery grip. When I went to this game, I brought like four batteries with me. I used, now I forgot, I posted it on Instagram. I think I used either half or maybe, let's call it half, maybe it's a little bit more than half of the battery. 1800 frames, I barely dented it. I'm that, I was impressed by that. I thought I was gonna need those extra batteries and I didn't. And I had the full 120 frame per second viewfinder on. Like the camera was basically on full tilt, the pre-burst recording, which means it's, it's basically always recording and it still had a ton of battery left. I was really, really impressed with the battery duration on that, I, I must say. For full basketball, you we were there from the beginning to the end, shot the whole thing. Um, yeah, that was pretty good. Okay, let's go back into the pictures here real quick. So, all right, so here are some more. Uh, oh, oh, great, grabbed her, grabbed her, holds her through. I mean, I, you know, overall, I don't think we've seen enough. It's pretty impressive. I was really, really pleased with it. Um, you know, so there it missed a little bit, and then it comes back in and it grabs her again. Um, we get into point. I tried playing with slower shutter speed. Let's see if we can find some of those. Um, didn't really work out that well. I kind of got one shot. Oh, this is a halftime show. Um, kind of got one shot that I, was pretty cool. Photo mechanic, it's amazing. It, it really does go fast. I mean, it brings us up, loads them up so quickly, but uh, but then it blanks out at some point, so you have to stop and back up. See, it's like it's like watching a movie. Look at that. Anyway, uh, let's see here. More. Oh, that's some pretty cool. Right, grabbed her. Focus on there. Again, I think overall, I'm pretty impressed at what it did. I wanted to find my slow, there we go, playing with slow shutter speed, try to, I never really got anything I, I really liked, but, but I kept trying. I kept trying to get something cool. Kind of got some halfway decent shots, but nothing too exciting in there. I like this, the slow shutter speed blur stuff for sports. I think it could be really, really cool. Look, I learned how to cut her head off, brilliant. Um, anyway, I don't know, I think we've seen enough. There's, there's a lot of shots in here and I think the camera performed very, very well. So again, I am not a sports photographer, so that makes it a little bit harder to, to compare, to say, oh, compared to the Nikon, what's it, or the camera? I don't really know. But I think it did very, very well. I found that that center focus strip worked out the best for this sort of thing, because there's always gonna be a player somewhere in there. The, if, if I knew that, you know, I was trying to get a shot where the player's off to the side or whatever, I did that single point, the single area, move that around. But it takes time to move it around, whether using the joystick or using the, the trackpad on the thumb thing, which if you haven't seen that before, where you're moving the focus point with your thumb on here, I did that a bit as well. Um, I've done a whole video on that. You'll want to check that thing out because that, that's a really, really cool way to control it. I really played with it a lot, but in the end, that single strip seemed to be the, the least effort, maximum result kind of a way to shoot it. Um, so there's that. Um, Stuart Schaefer is asking, what is the price of the 64 gig card and where can they be purchased? You can purchase these cards on, uh, on B&H. We'll, we'll be sure to link down below. They'll be on the kit.com slash photo Joseph, which by the way, if you go to kit.com slash photo Joseph, the top package kit, it's kit, is as seen on photo Joseph's photo moment. And we always put, sometimes we forget and it's a day later, but we always put whatever product I talked about today in that list. And if it was already in that list, it gets bumped to the top. So Shortly after the show today, you should be able to go to that list and see the Angelbird card. You'll see the G9. Um, you'll see the lens that I shot with the 35 to 100 f2.8, that sort of thing. That'll all be there. So that's the easiest way to find that, or just scroll down into the comments on YouTube and you'll find it there as well. Okay. Um, 
My Way Studio says, I'm looking forward to the screen focus feature. Yeah, yeah, just, we already did that video. So you can just check that one out. It's very cool. Willie085, um, Willie, so what, what's corrupted? Oh, okay. Um, uh, My Way Studios is saying, I'm looking forward to this. Oh, sorry. Willie says, 199 US from BNH, uh, the 64 gig card, 199. There you go. Thank you very much for sharing that. Okay. So overall, I like E. I think it worked out great. I think that the autofocus did a tremendous job, very commendable job, and um, I'm very, very happy with, with what I got out of it. And again, I think with a more experienced sports shooter, I would have gotten you know, better shots. But, but I, you know, I think I did all right. I didn't do too shabby. All right. Um, that's it. Oh, my student says you have a question. What's your question? Get it out there quick, and we're going to wrap up the show. Let me see if there's anything else in here that I missed. And make sure you put out photo Joseph in front of the question so I know to answer it. But it looks like I think I got all the questions earlier. Let's see, what is My Way Studios saying? Leica, oh, Leica kit lens or the cheaper one, is it worth it? Is it worth getting the Leica lens? So you're talking about the 12 to 60. Um, I have never shot with the non-kit lens. I'm, I'm sorry, I've never shot with the non-Leica lens, so I can't compare to that one. I can tell you that the 12 to 60 Leica is a very good lens. When I've said this quite a few times before, when I first got that lens with the GH5, I did not think I would like it. I didn't think that I would want to shoot with it, even though it's a very good, very good wide focal range from 12 to 60 millimeters, so 24 to 120 equivalent. Um, it, what is it, F2.8 to, no, 3.5, I don't remember what the aperture range is, but it's a variable aperture, so I thought, yeah, because I like constant aperture for shooting, and, but as an everyday carrier around always lens, it's great, and it is very sharp. It's a very, very nice lens, so I highly recommend it. I can't tell you how much better it is over the non Leica version, just because I've never shot with it. But I can tell you that I was surprised at how much I like the 12 to 60 Leica lens. I use it a lot more than I thought I ever would. So I hope that helps with your buying decision. Uh, Telma Murphy says, morning, Telma Murphy from Riverside, Alabama. Have you ever thought of doing, bring this up here, have you ever thought of doing time lapse or stop frame like you just did and putting together some of the best photos in the montage? Oh, I'd like to do a little, um, a little movie kind of a thing. I could. Mm. I could, but you just saw one, so. No, I hadn't really thought of it, I mean, I don't know. It's, you know, I shoot movies if I want to do kind of animated things. But you certainly could. It's, there's always fun stuff to do. Uh, and Brent is saying, yes, the Leica is worth it. There you go. Well, Brent says the Leica is worth it. I love that. Uh, like if 12 to 60, F3, 5 to 5, 6. Thank you, that's, that's what I needed. Um, I didn't remember the aperture offhand, so Willie, thank you for sharing that. 12 to 60 millimeter, F3, 5 to 5, 6, aspherical power optical image stabilization is a great lens. It is. It really is a great lens. Surprisingly so. Um, like I said, surprisingly because I didn't think being the variable aperture that I would like it, but it turns out it's bum diggity. It's pretty awesome. Okay, that's it. We're going to wrap this thing up. Hey, on Friday, we are doing something fun on Friday. Let me pull up the card for that. On Friday, we are going to take a look at... GH5S low light test. So I may have, uh, well, I know I've talked about it before. You may have heard before. I'm going to be shooting, this is a totally personal project, going to be shooting a short film about blacksmithing. I mean, about, it's around blacksmithing. My buddy of mine here is a blacksmith. He's got this awesome shop. So I went up to do some test shots. Now, that's what you're seeing here. That's a test shot, one of the test shots in there. Um, it's not as dark in the, in the studios as it's going to be when we do it because when we actually do the shot, we're going to have a lot more smoke in there and I'm going to add some extra lights. But this is a first time kind of first test with the GH5S, shooting at ISO 2500, shooting V-Log, and I was shooting to the Atomos Ninja Inferno so I could shoot at 4K, 10-bit, 422, 60p to ProRes. And the results are great, tremendous, but also there's something really, really interesting about the ProRes stuff. So I'm going to, um, I'm gonna share that with you. And I, there's actually a problem uh, with potentially, potentially with the Atomos. And I am, I've got a support request out to them. I created a whole video explaining the problem and I'm waiting for them to get back to me. And I'm really, really hoping they get back to me before Friday so that I can show you what I run into and hopefully explain to you why I'm seeing that. And if they haven't gotten back to me by then, um, then you guys hopefully will help and maybe somebody out there can tell me what's going on. But there is something definitely not right happening. It has nothing to do with the camera. It has to do with the Ninja. And I'm going to show you the beautiful footage. I'm going to show you the issue. I'm going to show you a workaround for the issue. And hopefully I will explain why the issue is happening and a better workaround than the one that I've come up with. So that's going to be Friday's show. So make sure you tune in for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I guess that's it. All right, guys. Cool. Thank you very much. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time.